Tiderba is celebrated at the culmination of the two Muslim feasts of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. The event dismounted in several Nigerian cities. The picture of elaborately dressed horsemen riding besides emirs in ceremonial robes, accompanied by lewd players wearing grandiose headgowns, depicts an ancient tradition of strong empires in the West Coast. The Derba consequently preserves a culture that radiated at the height of the region's historical past. Today we are discovering this beautiful culture along the Senegami Street. We are going to understand what exactly is the Durba about and how does the Gambia intend on celebrating this very festival. You first go greet them. Hello. So that you can give them how to build the kick. Okay, um, Sorry, the, yeah. Highness, uh, the normal greeting is, is just like this. Yes. You know this thing means we are united for peace and progress. Okay. So you are just putting your hand like this. Thank you. They're just like this. Move. Okay, <laughs> 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 I know you are wondering what exactly is happening here. It is indeed a spectacle and for me especially, this is the first time I am seeing something like this. This exactly is called the Doba Festival and it's something that happens all over Africa. But this is the first time it will be happening in the Gambia. And what is the significance of this kind of festival? I have with me the Creative Director at the National Center for Arts and Culture, Sher Omar Jal, and he's going to help me break down uh, this uh, exactly. Sher Omar, welcome to Expedition Gambia. Thank you very much, Mulushi. Yeah. It's my pleasure to be on Expedition Gambia once again. Right. Sharma, this we're seeing today is the first of its kind, and it's indeed a spectacle, quite marvelous. Give us a brief background into what exactly is the Doba Festival. Yeah, the Doba Festival, it's a northern Nigerian um, um, culture, cultural heritage. 
that actually sh um, showcases the uh, inheritance or the heritages of the uh, Fulani people, the uh, Yoruba people, the Hausa people, who have been um, very high rock decisions. And it started with the story of Usman Danfodio. When the you know, wars were stopped and there were no wars and the like, so there was a need to look into what can we do with our warriors. So the only thing that could have happened was to get them to show their power. And power is not by killing or fighting, but to show the might, the military might that they have by exposing and displaying, you know, the might that they have and what they are able to do in terms of, you know, Calvary and things like that. Then they put it into a programmatic thing. Mm. So afterward, because it's, you know, it has been moving on and it has been going on for, for, for ages. It's one of the biggest festivals in Nigeria. It attracts more than two million people. And it's almost the only festival that the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth attended three times in her lifetime. So it's a big festival, absolutely. Why is it so important for the Gambia? And uh, what do we look out for? Do we really expect something like this to happen in its bigger format? And what importance does it have for us? Yeah, um, um, absolutely. One of the areas that um, we are looking at it, it's like um, to learn from it. Because a festival that exhibits over two million people plus, we have a long way to learn from that. And, uh, you know, with our biggest festival, which is the International Roots Festival, we barely, you know, attract more than 100 tourists that come actually for the, to, for the festival alone. So we really need to diversify the product now. And looking at it, we need to learn new strategies. And this is a successful one. That's attracting 2 million people. Obviously, there is a need that we have to be able to do. So as to be able, if we are not able to get even the 2 million people, but we are able to get the 100,000 people or even the 10,000. Well, we want to be optimistic. <laughs> yeah, of course, we want to be optimistic. And that's one of the reasons. But we know by virtue of the nature of the product. Right. If we are able to exhibit it in the country and we are able to do it properly, uh -huh. there is a need that we are sure we will be attracting the Nigerian market as well. And are we ready for that? We are much ready for that because that's why we are doing today the mini doba so as to know what it is about. And today I think a lot of Gambians know about it because the hundreds of people that you see on in the cars and you know on the streets and I think the exhibition was fantastic, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Indeed, it fantastic. Was. What we're going to do, Aliona, is we're going to see uh, what exactly is going to happen when this actual festival happens come next year. <laughs> Gambia and Nigeria has a very long history. Through religion, through education, and through trade. We have Gambians of Nigerian extraction, both in the south and from the north of Nigeria. So Gambia is not a strange place for Nigerians to feel at home. Um, it is also befitting for me to uh, say to you, come back as many times as you wish. Here is your home. Um, the cooperation between the two countries, especially the cooperation within the framework of cultural exchange, we want to seriously honest that cooperation so that we will learn from your ways of doing things so that we can inculcate it in our festivals. Because we plan on doing something similar to this whereby we will have uh, a grand festival, we will have a festival date where we will have the chiefs, the uh, um, imams and everybody to perform the way they used to perform before colonization, which we think will bring back the unity, the vibrantness of the people, so that they will one come as a unit, as citizens of this country. And also, we hope to invite some people from West Africa to come in and showcase 
what Africa has uh, for us all. We were united before and we will continue to unite ourselves uh, despite the uh, colonization period. But we as Africans, we have studied it through the ECOWAS, now through AU, and together we will forge a stronger Africa. The Dober Project Festival, which will be happening here in the Gambia, adds to the complements of what the Gambia Tourism Board is doing. It's in line with our marketing strategy to increase our products. It is key that we exchange cultures, we understand each other's cultures, we also showcase each other's culture, especially from the sub-region and Nigeria in particular. The Gambia Tourism Board is very concerned about the Nigerian market and we want to penetrate it, penetrate the Nigerian market further and this is one of the products that we will be using to penetrate the Nigerian market further. The Nigerian market is a very important market to the Gambia because not, they are not only Africans, but they are also high spenders. When Nigerians come to the Gambia, and you comp the amount of money that they spend, as compared to other destinations, it's, the ratio is one to five. So we value the Nigerian market. And this product coming into the Gambia next year will be very important for our marketing strategy to increase the number of tourists from the Nigerian market. Because this will not only attract Nigerians into the Gambia, but will also attract Nigerians from the sub-region, which is what the Gambia Tourism Board is looking for. The Gambia has all that it takes to attract the Nigerian market. When it comes to the food, we share similar cuisines. For example, the jollof rice, which Nigerians fill their own and Gambians fill their own. So we have certain things in common. So we can cater for that. When it comes to shopping, the Gambia has it. When it comes to leisure, the Gambia has it. When it comes to the mice, the Gambia has it. You name it. I can stay here and list all the products that the Gambia has to attract the Nigerian market. Hence, the reason why we're working with national arts and culture to ensure that this festival is a success. This festival will bring the number of tourists that we expect from the Nigerian market and the Nigerians in the diaspora. Well, uh, you know, Doba, uh, as I want to inform you, is practiced almost in the whole West African region. It's only Gambia that is exclusive, and Gambia have it now. And why Gambia, as I said, you are having more than 250,000 tourists coming to the Gambia annually. So putting that in mind, you will know that it's going to be like a global village. Those people, those 250,000 people come from different walks of life, different countries, different backgrounds. They will be hearing about Africa. We'll be hearing some negative reports. They'll be hearing Africans were slaves. They'll be hearing Africans were apes, or were this, or that. But coming to see culture that totally differs from what they have there, will tell them that there was life before colonization. Thank God, Mr. Director, make reference to that. In Africa, we had no boundaries. They created it. And uh, we have trans sahara trade that span from Putajalo to Makele in, uh, in, in, in Ethiopia, spanning almost 10,000 kilometers. Along that region, we are all brothers and sisters. We have a lot of similarities. We have a lot of commonalities. Then coming back to Doba, as I said, uh, this is just the mini Doba. We tried as much as possible to make it as brief as possible. If not, in Kano, for instance, or in northern Nigeria, we used to have between two to 3,000 horses dressed in this manner 
and walk along the street. We used to have between two to three million people trooping on that occasion to witness the, the movement of the Emir from one location to the other to appreciate the beauty. And also, it makes those horse riders who ordinarily would have been warriors during the pre-colonial season, when there were wars between one community to the other, those riders, that's why you see them dressed in a warrior way. You see me with my sword. Every person also carries spears and uh, bows and arrows to show bravery, to show pride, to show strength. So this uh, is the minimal doba. Amongst them, as you see, is like representation of Minister of Environment, Minister of uh, Interior, Minister of Defense, Minister of all walks of life. And amongst them, there are also disciples, there are warriors, there are a lot of things. As you see, government of the day, so it was before the independence. Before the colonial time comes, they met us, we were well organized and we have authorities. So these represent the authorities that we were having before the colonial masters come to put us to this, uh, I can say, Kogma. This is what I can tell you. And in fact, we have the queen of at the ceremony and she's, she's hiding her face right now, but I'm sure she's someone you know. So there is no need to give a very big introduction to this. Um, welcome to Expe Expedition Gambia, Honorable Fatou Jahumpa. Um, thank you very much. It's my pleasure having you, for having me. Right. This is the first time we're seeing you in something like this. Why is this so important for you? Well, first, my country. Um, because in 2011, I was initiated into the royal family of the northerners in Kanu, in particular, and Katsina, as a queen. And uh, wherever the, the Dorba goes, if they invite me, I will go. Mm -hmm. So since um, I see that the Gambia, um, it's my country, and uh, tourism is one of our country's earning uh, sector, mm -hmm. I decided to speak with His Royal Highness to see if we can have the Doba in Gambia and the colony to be built here so that uh, the tourists will have it and then you have the Root Festival. We uh, invited them um, and they came through the Nigeria High Commission of course and the Minister of Tourism uh, and Culture welcomed them through the Gambia Tourism uh, Authority Board and the, the Culture Office. So they have discussed and hopefully by next year we'll have the Dorba here where we have a colony and you have everything and maybe we'll have the right things like 3,000 horses, mm -hmm. not five horses today, <laughs> and um, amusement park and everything. And then again, when I saw that um, because of the Boko Haram um, uh, effect in Nigeria, a lot of tourists are not going to Nigeria to see the Dorba. So it's five hours, six hours from North America, from uh, England, UK and the European countries to come to the Gambia. And we have a lot of tourists coming. So I think if we have it, it will also boost the tourism uh, uh, sector industry in this country. And that's why uh, we brought the project here and the ministry. Today what we had was just a mock of what it should supposed to be. And then we saw that we had more than 1,000 people following us and we are asking questions. So this is it, my country first and, uh, we will, and culture too, because my country uh, respects culture and uh, the government of the day also promotes tourism and culture. So this is important for me. And I think next year we do it, we have more tourists because we are going to market it and it's at no cost. Uh, to the Ministry of Tourism and Industry. Right. All the costs comes from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Wow. Yes. And I do see that you are indeed an integral part of this whole uh, Doba festival c coming to the Gambia. What do we look out for? I'm, I'm quite um, curious to know exactly what the spectacle would be like when we finally put this whole into uh, play come uh, next year. Like I said, um, they still have to work. You see the chairman of the National Arts and uh, culture was here, the Gambia Tourism Authority Board was here, the representative of the Ministry of Tourism and Culture was here. So next time His Royal Highness comes, because they are all professionals, remember that most of them are highly trained engineers and professors in universities in Kano and Katsina, Maidugure, Borno, Bauchi, all the northern places in Nigeria. So if we are going to have it and the Gambia takes it and accepts it, uh, with no 
burden of the budget coming from them but from yeah. their side mm -hmm. I, I think it's gonna boost like i said earlier on uh, the tourist industry in this country and it's going to be a new thing and then we have guinea bissau senegal and all these people to come around And as we see now, His Royal Highness is about to take his leave. But he's going out of this country with the assurance that come next year, if this particular festival gets to be implemented, it's going to be one which will really benefit the economy, the tourism sector, culture, you name it. And we therefore look forward to this festival come next year. Well, I am Fatali Kamaloshi and I'm signing out now till I come your way next week. This is Expedition Gambia.